Well, listen, um, I want to get to the uh, the ticket monopoly story that you had, but I, sure. I don't I don't know if we do we have time. Do you have time? Because I know you're going to jump soon. I got about I got about 10 minutes. Sure. OK. All right. Great. Um, so the um, and so we have that issue and that issue of consolidation with the banks. There's something um, is not too far afield in terms of the issue sets. I mean, the the one of the things one of the reasons why you do not want consolidation in these industries is so that you still have. Uh, servicers um, supplying, you know, services on a local level because uh, there's a lot of benefits to it being local. Obviously, they make smarter loans, they make more targeted loans, uh, it, they they increase economic activity in uh, you know in 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 more far afield places. I guess um, the other problem with consolidation we're now seeing in the the ticket market now. I haven't bought a ticket to anything in a long time, uh, Dave. But when you went on tour for your sold-out shows, Radio City, uh, Staples Center, you, you know this. You know this business. Uh, I mean, of course, I know the business. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, but all right, so tell us what's happening because uh, you wanted to do this. You wanted to write this piece up so that uh, antitrust issues would not be so, um, uh, I guess, remote, yeah, remote exactly. and you want something a little more tangible. So you use the examples of, of right. the ticket, uh, show ticket monopoly. Tell us about it. Right. So people other than you buy tickets That's right. to, to events, uh, concerts, sporting events, whatever. Uh, and they, they recognize the same patterns that, uh, there's a release date for the tickets and you get on the website and you're locked out and you're locked out and within five minutes, all the tickets are gone. Or, uh, you get your, you get in, you get your ticket and at the back screen, the last right before you purchase, you find out that there's some giant markup for a processing fee or a ticket facility fee or something, you know, a million fees thrown onto the, the back end of the face value of the ticket price. Well, uh, there was a, a government accountability office, which is sort of Congress's personal think tank, if you will, uh, report on this event ticket industry. And it turns out, uh, as we knew, that Ticketmaster controls about 80% of all event primary event tickets. And then there's a secondary market, sort of a scalping market, where StubHub controls about 50%. Of, of, of that market. And the second biggest uh, competitor is Ticketmaster, uh, who has their own uh, uh, secondary market site called Tickets Now. Ticketmaster is owned by Live Nation Entertainment, which is one of the big event promoters. They manage artists. They own venues. So they're very vertically integrated. Live Nation bought Ticketmaster in 2010. Uh, the Justice Department allowed the deal to go through. They said that they put in conditions that would have allowed much more competition in this industry and prevented uh, a live nation from saying, hey, we manage this artist. You have to use Ticketmaster to sell the tickets for this artist. But that's exactly what's happening. And uh, the GAO report showed markups of between 27 and 31 percent on 27 to 31% of the face value is what you're paying in fees. Uh, and fees are about half of the total revenue of, of, of Live Nation Ticketmaster. Not the, not the you know, managing of artists, not the owning of venues, the fees. So nobody, on, on these so individual it's, tickets. this is basically just sort of a classic case of, uh, it, so the bands don't see this, the venues don't see this, this is just... We're going to gouge you because we have the ability. We, this is just rent-seeking on some level, right? Uh, it's total rent-seeking. It, it's exactly what it is. And you see it in the secondary market as well, uh, where, you know, places, uh, you know, ticket brokers use, use bots uh, to, to, to take large percentages of tickets on the initial sale, or they use large staffs to buy up the tickets. And then they capitalizing on, you know, the sort of desperation of people who uh, want to go to the show, uh, they, they put an even greater markup on uh, these tickets uh, for people to get. So this is a consequence of monopoly that everybody sees, except for you, everybody sees in their daily lives uh, when uh, they go to, you know, want to have a little entertainment. So uh, th this 
I think is a good way of bringing this down to a very, a very relatable level. But we should also add, I mean, this is important, that, that it's not just a question of, you know, uh, the, the, the problems with monopoly are not just that, um, you know, ticket prices are more expensive. There's a, there's a whole other um, uh, realm, I mean, you know, because I, I, I want to make sure that people also get that the problem we have with antitrust is that it has been uh, the, the conditions under which we would allow such a monopoly have been so narrowly tailored that there well, are other true. societal problems, right, that are associated that's with true. it. That's true. I mean, uh, in this particular case, there is a certain amount of rent-seeking and gouging going on. That's really the main issue. But you can also talk about the fact that if Live Nation, uh, the company that designs uh, and, and put, distributes the tickets and also owns the venues, uh, doesn't rep you as an artist, you're going to have a hard time right. getting in those venues. So uh, the flip side of this is it makes it difficult on the producers, the people who want to deliver uh, this entertainment, to get it out to the public. So that, that's sort of, uh, they call that monopsony sometimes. Yep. Uh, that's the flip side of monopoly. And, and, and you know, there's, there are service issues, there's quality issues uh they, if there's a glitch in the live nation service and they control 80 percent of the ticketing uh suddenly you have a problem that's much bigger than 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 just sort of one local problem uh there are all sorts of uh ways in which uh this this uh, concentration of economic power uh, and political power uh degrades modern life let me just let me just also say that the um, that that monopsony that you spoke about, the way that that trickles uh, sort of downstream is that we literally probably have less access to good music because of it. I mean, that's a very you know sort of subjective uh, um, uh, notion. But regardless of what your idea of good music is, um, it narrows the opportunities for a whole wide range of music to exist and be commercially viable because uh, of, of, of how narrow you have to fit into a hole to be successful because there's only basically one buyer. Right. And certainly what it means is that the sort of monopoly uh, that is expressed by Live Nation of owning a certain number of venues and, and controlling the ticketing apparatus leads to a certain kind of monopoly or concentration in terms of the number of artists who are viable. Right. So uh, it, it's, it's sort of uh, concentration creep, uh, I've heard it described as, is that, you know, when you have this bottleneck in one side of, of, of an industry, it's going to lead to a bottleneck in another side of an industry. And, and in this case, it's artists who uh, struggle. Uh, and they're not only going up against the sort of live event monopoly, but of course they're going up against uh, the fact that YouTube is streaming their, their music for pennies or Spotify or Apple, uh, and, and these narrow distribution networks make it difficult for them to get the music out. Uh, and, and, and then, you know, on the live event side, they, they have, they struggle to get the best venues. So, uh, it's, it's, it's sort of a, an all encompassing thing.